Let's talk to Peter Hitchens, columnist with the Mail on Sunday, of course. Peter, very good morning to you. Good morning to you. Um, I, I despair sometimes when I hear stories like that because it goes on so often in so many different parts of our system in this country. Um, that, that, you know, I know it's a, a hoary old phrase, but it, it does appear that everything's a bit broken, if not quite a lot broken. Well, it, we, we live in a country which still pretends to be much richer than it is and will not look in the face. The, mm. the fact that it, it is both poorer and it has a much larger population than it used to have. Yeah. So almost all services of this kind are under immense pressure. And what increasingly happens, of course, is that those people in, in, who are influential and, and better off slip away from the National Health Service and start going private. I yeah. hear of GPs who themselves, when they have a problem, they go private. So yeah. uh, that would seem to suggest that they know how bad it is. Um, my, if, if there was one thing I could wish for, actually, it would be that everyone would wake up one morning in this country and realise that we are not as big, as powerful, or as rich as we used to be. Though, in fact, in many ways, if we if we stop behaving like that, we could have a, a much more civilised society than we do. And you look across the channel at France and at countries like the Netherlands, they're not particularly richer than we are, but they do manage to have more effective public services mm. in many ways than we do, uh, partly because of this delusion. I, I get into trouble over this because I'm supposed to be right-wing and, and all the rest <laughs> of it. I say it is absurd for us to continue to maintain a, a Cold War superpower nuclear weapon uh, at immense cost uh, when we simply don't matter as a, as, as a country anymore. Mm. We, obviously, we should maintain some sort of nuclear weapon. We spent so much money developing them, it would be crazy to throw them away. But, but, but maintaining that enormously expensive thing. And also this huge involvement that we have currently in the Ukraine war, a war in which I cannot see any British national interest at all, in which we send billions and billions in aid to Ukraine as if we were a rich country. Mm. We're not. Over and over again, we behave as if we're rich. We should be concentrating on, on, on the things that we can do. And if we did that, then we could have a, a much better health service, much better public transport, much better schools. But we don't. We, we continue to pretend that we're, we're a fantastically great and powerful and rich country. And we, so when, because we, we will not cut a coat according to our cloth, we, we get it all wrong. And that is actually one of the most, one of the deepest problems. There are many other mm grave problems in this country one of the deepest is this continued belief that, that the world thinks we're a great power actually you only need to live abroad for a very short time to understand that most people barely care about us at all that's not our concern <coughs> true i mean i, I was going to say we, we live also with a government now which tells us that they are uh, out of money that there's a big, big black hole left behind by the by the last government 22 yeah. billion and yet they're going to spend billions and billions of pounds overseas uh, to help countries with their climate change programs and you exactly. just go well hang on we haven't got that money what are you doing and we're also we're in the in the in the course of ruining our own uh, our own country with with, with climate change obsession and oh. this this month the the last uh, coal-fired power station in this country will close down uh, on the in the strange belief that this will somehow save the planet. Right. In fact, while we closed down coal-fired power stations, and have been doing for, for I think about twenty years now, China and India have been building them mm. and opening them, and uh, and and running them. And so the effect, even if you believe, which I am skeptical about, uh, the theory that running coal-fired power stations uh, creates global warming. Even if you believe that, uh, which you're welcome to do, uh, then this will make no difference to it. Right. And yet we continue to do it. And the huge expense of subsidising wind power, particularly, uh, which is in, in particularly the, the the installation of large numbers of new long-distance power cables, because yes. it has to be got from where it's made to where it's needed, is is an enormous expense. And, and then the, all the regulations of, of the net zero programme are deeply damaging to our economy and will continue to be years to come and so uh, the government as you rightly say spends an awful lot of money where does this money come from an awful lot of this money comes from, from borrowing it yeah. and when they borrow it, it, it they then have to pay the interest on it and so we, we are, I think there was some point earlier on this year it may still be persisting when we were actually borrowing money to pay the interest on in our previous loans mm. Now, if any individual were doing that, do you think he was completely off his chump? Uh, I think that a country which is borrowing money to pay interest on its loans has probably taken a serious wrong turning. None of these things though, are truly necessary. An awful lot of money is wasted in our system. Yeah. And it's wasted on things which, if we stopped doing them, we would, we, we would be glad that we'd stopped. But the, the will, there is not any consideration. Both the major political parties still continue in this illusion that we're a, that we're a great power. 
and that we speak, uh, that, that, that when our voice is heard, uh, the world trembles, and that also that we're, that we're rich and we're a big right. G7 country. But this is only done by pretending that a, an increasing gross domestic product, that's the national, as it were, the, the annual national income, uh, means that you're rich. It doesn't uh, if you then you average it out per head of population. No. Well, when it doesn't. We don't, I mean, we lower don't... Down. The, the, the charts than we, we claim to be. Right, exactly right. And we don't feel as if we're a rich country. It doesn't feel like no, we do not. Let me just ask you about the BBC. A story this morning in The Telegraph about how BBC has confirmed plans to cut dozens more jobs in its local operations. So they're going to get rid of something like 500 roles uh, by March of 2026 to get rid of lots and lots of journalists from, uh, from, the, from the local uh, networks. But they're going to spend a further £80 million on diversity programmes in order uh, to get more diversity into the BBC. Again, this is, this is what comes with living in a dogma-driven country. I, I don't know. I, the BBC local uh, radio used to be, as far as I could discover, quite a lively thing, well-connected mm. with its community. The other day, something rather nasty happened in my hometown, which I happen to know about. Uh, and, and knowing, as I, I think I do, the mechanisms by which news gets to news organisations, I tried very hard, with some help from others, to get the BBC local radio to pay some attention to it. I couldn't get them to answer the phone. Really? And when I listened to their news bulletin to see whether they, they had, in fact, taken any notice of the messages we'd left, yeah. it was all about, it was all about um, Israel. There was no really? local news. <laughs> and I, this, this seems to have collapsed. Right. And, and why is that? I mean, I don't. I think that the BBC local journalism has, in fact, been a, an unfair competitor to local newspapers in some ways. Is another question. But on the other hand, if they're going to run local radio stations, they should be local. And but the pursuit in the BBC of again of dogma, in in all these things, it reminds me of the old Soviet Union that the priority was not intelligent, rational assessment of the immediate need, uh, but the the pursuit there of Marxist-Leninist talk, the, and the pursuit here of various forms of political correctness and uh, and green zealotry. And these things are immensely expensive to do, but they produce no public benefit. And it, it, indeed, they distort the outcome of any kind of effort to to spend money and build institutions. We, we are in a we are in an ideological country, and, and 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 yet nobody will fight this ideology. When the last time, for instance, the Green issue came up in Parliament, and the whole the, the whole plan to 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 wreck the economy uh, on the on the basis that the, the the warmists were right was discussed, I think three members of Parliament voted against it. Mm. Three yeah. uh, in, a, in a house of more than 600. There is no real opposition to this stuff and it, it's still not there and people who think that the recent spasm of reform made any difference must now look at Parliament and realise that it simply wasn't so. It's, it's worse than it ever was. Mm. I think it is. You're absolutely right. Pete